This is The Culture. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. I am Darian Scalamoni, and I am here for our newest thing. We're going to try it on the channel. It's called the Cinema Wave News Cycle, and we're going to be talking about some of the biggest news stories that have come out this week in film and television. So I don't know if you guys already knew this, but I actually started um, the Cinema Wave Media blog spot uh, many years ago, back when I was in college, when I became a journalism minor, and I've been reporting on uh, entertainment news for many years, along with posting trailers and giving reviews before we started the network. Um, so that's a place where you could see our enhanced, fully detailed articles. But some of the things I want to go over, some of the things I've had a chance to post on there and other things that I unfortunately haven't had the time to post on the site while well, we've been doing other content for you guys for the channel and things like that. So some of the things you guys might have already saw, but I'm just going to detail it for you. Otherwise, um, other things you might be hearing for the first time, but I'm very curious on a lot of your guys' thoughts. So let us know in the comments what news stories you're excited about, other stuff you would like us to cover. And this is something that's always been near and dear to my heart because I think it's cool to see how stories evolve. One of the things that I remember reporting on a very long time ago, and I talked about it actually in one of our podcasts recently was the fact that Amy Schumer was originally attached to play Barbie many, many years ago, a fully differently interpreted project. Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach were obviously not attached at that point. And it just seemed like Mattel was just trying to get their feet wet in the entertainment space. And obviously Barbie became a worldwide phenomenon. And I do feel like they obviously took the right steps to getting that way and forward thinking and progression within uh, the entertainment industry. So they obviously made the right choice, but a lot of things change over time. Actors drop out of roles. Uh, movies get canceled. Um, the MCU has changed their timeline and different projects over the years and things like that. So I do think it's fun to talk about the story. So a lot of things have came, come out this week. We're going to start with just some of the news that I had posted on the site. And I'm going to start with a project that is um, – going to be a movie for Apple based on a true story. Um, and it actually is Matthew McConaughey is going to star in a film called The Lost Bus for Paul Greengrass. Now, Paul Greengrass is a director that you guys have probably seen some of his films. He's probably best known for his film Captain Phillips, which tells a true story. Um, and Tom Hanks is in the lead role in that as a, as a guy who works on a ship who um, gets invaded by Somalian pirates and he has to survive and, and try to... Um, get through that that obstacle uh he's also his most recent film was in 2020 he directed tom hanks in news of the world and he's actually known for also being the headlining director in the born uh franchise with with uh matt damon um so just really quickly if you guys didn't already know the lost bus is based on a liz phillips book that is called paradise one town struggle to survive an american wildfire which is a true story from 2018 which became the deadliest fire in california's state history the uh, blaze took place ironically enough in camp fire and the film will star mcconaughey as a bus driver named kevin mckay who along with another school teacher named mary ludwig uh, heroically led a school bus filled with students throughout the wildfire that engulfed the whole town of paradise california the fire unfortunately uh, ended the lives of 85 civilians, and it will aim to tell that story through the perspective of McKay and Ludwig, though the latter role of Ludwig has not been cast yet. So they're looking, for, obviously, for um, a pretty heavy hitter in terms of a female actress to share the screen with McConaughey and sort of lead this story, which is based on the tragic true story of what happened in Paradise, California. Um, so, yeah, this is a project that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I really like to see McConaughey dip his toe into the dramatic work ever since the reconnaissance that happened um, in the end of the 2010s when he finally won an Academy Award for Dallas Buyers Club and he had won an Emmy Award for True Detective and and things like that. Um, he hasn't been on screen in quite a long time, actually. So he hasn't um, had a, a live action on screen role since 2019's The Gentleman. And so we're already in the year 2024. If this film does eventually wind up filming this year, maybe this is the first one out of the gate that he winds up doing that hits theaters. But he also recently wrapped filming on another movie uh, called The Rivals of Amziah King, which was a crime thriller from Andrew Patterson. And that article is also on Cinema Ways blog if you guys want to check out what that one's about. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see McConaughey get involved in more things as well. He was he had a lot of philanth uh, philanthropic philanth philanthropic. I'm definitely saying that wrong. Um, but he was doing a lot of things outside of the entertainment space for a little bit uh and i think that took a lot of his attention away um but paul greengrass again he hasn't directed anything since news of the world he did get um an oscar nomination for best director for his film united 93 which is based on uh the 9 11 um based on 9 11 and the tragedy that happened on that flight united 93 um 
But yeah, so those two are attached. Brad Inglesby, who uh, wrote um, the series Mayor of Easttown for HBO, he will be penning the screenplay for that. And he also has another film coming out later this year, which is a thriller called Echo Valley, starring Julianne Moore and Sidney Sweeney. So that uh, story I reported on Monday, January 29th, and there's another one that I report on January 29th, which is a completely different film in terms of tone and things like that. And it's actually uh, a film called Fountain of Youth, which is going to be directed by Guy Ritchie. Um, this is an adventure film that is basically telling the story of this brother-sister combo that um, seek out uh, the fantastical Fountain of Youth to receive immortality for the remainder of their lives. Now, it may sound a little cookie cutter to you, but... The thing that really caught my attention with the original report from Deadline was that the movie is said to be a top priority for Skydance, who's going to be producing, based on the script that was written by James Vanderbilt, because it blew executives away. Um, now, that just may be industry talk, and maybe the film isn't going to be as good as on the page as it could be on screen, but... I do like Guy, a lot of Guy Ritchie's stuff, and uh, the ensemble that they've assembled so far is pretty solid. So the brother-sister combo is actually going to be uh, John Krasinski and Natalie Portman. And then uh, Isa Gonzalez as well as Donald Gleason are also going to be joining the ensemble. So really quickly, just want to go over Guy Ritchie's filmography and what he's been doing recently. Um, so Guy Ritchie, you guys probably, if, if you're more of a casual moviegoer, you may know him for – the, um, directing uh, Sherlock Holmes. He did the the, uh, the remake with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law um, in 2009. He also wrote and directed the live action uh, Aladdin, uh, which uh, in my opinion was one, has been one of the better live action Disney films that have been released, um, especially considering a lot of the hesitation uh, that moviegoers had to see uh, Will Smith embody uh, the character of Genie, which Robin Williams did such a great job of. Um, but uh, Aladdin too, really quickly, just uh, another like um, uh, Mina Masood who who played Aladdin, live action Aladdin. Let's get that guy more work, right? I mean, I th I thought he did a really great job embodying that character, and that's that's hard to step foot into that such an iconic Disney role. It's his first major film, and he hasn't gotten anything since then. I know he was rumored for a while to be Ezra Bridger for Star Wars. He obviously lost that out to Aman Asfandi, but let's try to get him some more work because I think he's definitely deserving and a great young actor um, on the come up. Um, but Guy Ritchie uh, is is not like Greengrass in that he's a very active director. I think he's done a lot of projects in the last few years. Just in the last uh, three years alone, he had two films come out in 2023, one better received than the other. That would be The Covenant, which um, – starred Jake Gyllenhaal, and then he had another film, Operation Fortune, Roos de Guerre, um, which starred Hugh Grant, and uh, I believe Josh Hartnett was also in that, and Jason Statham, who's a frequent collaborator with Guy Ritchie, was also in that film as well. Um, ironically, the last film that McConaughey had starred in, The Gentleman, Guy Ritchie also wrote and directed as well. So again, he's a very active director, uh, and he has two other projects that are already in the can. One of them, the trailer actually just came out for, uh, it's called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I'm actually going to have the trailer up probably tomorrow on the site if you guys haven't checked it out. Or by the time this pod releases, it should probably already be up on the blog. Uh, but he also has an untitled project that is coming as well, which revolves around two extraction uh, specialists who have to designate a route uh, of escape for a senior female negotiator. And that stars three of his most uh, recent collaborators, Jake Gyllenhaal, who again, I had just said, had starred in The Covenant, uh, Isa Gonzalez, who Fountain of Youth is now going to be her third project with Guy Ritchie. His last three films that he's filmed, she will be the star of, as well as Henry Cavill, who also um, appeared as one of the leads in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. So um, those are the two that he has worked. He was working on, but this one was just announced, Fountain of Youth. Uh, John Krasinski, probably better known in recent years as a director. He wrote and directed uh, the first two A Quiet Place films. Uh, there's a spinoff coming out later this year called uh, Day One, A Quiet Place Day One. He's actually not attached to that one. I do believe he has story credit on it, but he's not directing it, as that is going to be directed by Michael Sarnoski, who directed the indie film Pig that starred Nicolas Cage. Um, but recent years on camera, I mean, Krasinski kind of has a lock on Jack Ryan for Amazon, which isn't as big as Reacher, but still does really good numbers for the streaming service. Um, and then uh, he all, his next directing project, which totally veers off from what he did with the horror genre in a quiet place is going to be a, a family film called if which hits theaters on may 17th the trailer for that's already out you guys should check that out natalie portman on the other hand she just earned a golden globe nomination for her role in may december we do have uh our review for that film up on the channel i'll link that below um i thought she was solid in the film but again charles melton was sort of the standout for myself zach and liz when we did review it um she uh recently wrapped her first television role in uh, apple's lady in the lake which she will uh star opposite david corn sweat 
Moses Ingram and Mike Epps. Portman's a three-time Oscar nominee. So again, anything, anytime she jumps onto a project, it definitely adds credibility to it as well. Um, we already kind of touched on Issa Gonzalez. She's an, um, she's kind of making a name for herself and now collaborating a lot with Guy Ritchie going forward. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith that just released this past Friday of the time of this recording. Um, she does have a role in that as well that stars Donald Glover and Maya Erskine for Amazon. And she also is going to be one of the leads in the Netflix show Three Body Problem, which drops on the streaming service on March 21st. Um, and that is going to be a series from David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. That's the first thing they're doing since coming in and uh, helming the television adaptation of Game of Thrones. So that's a highly uh, anticipated project for a lot of people. And just rounding out the cast, Donald Gleason, who I think is one of the industry's most underrated actors. He's great in a lot of different things he does. And he's now starting to show a lot of versatility in terms of his acting ability. Uh, I first became aware of him with one of my favorite romantic films ever, which is About Time, uh, which he co-starred with Rachel McAdams. But he also, um, <coughs> excuse me, earned himself uh, Critics' Choice and Golden Globe nominations last year for uh, his role as a serial killer named Sam Fortner in FX's The Patient, uh, which he co-starred with Steve Carell as well. So uh, it's a really good ensemble to start out with, and I'm excited to see kind of where they go with Fountain of Youth. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I am excited. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. Now... The next piece of news is something that uh, I really appreciate. And if you guys haven't had a chance to check out our most anticipated films list for 2024, this is a bit of a spoiler alert. But my number one film that I'm anticipating for the year is a film called The Instigators, which is going to uh, star Matt Damon and uh, Casey Affleck, sort of bringing together that Boston connection that those two actors, as well as Ben Affleck, Casey's older brother, have had since the Good Will Hunting days in the 90s. Um, and Ben actually had a chance to direct Matt Damon for the very first time in 2023's air which did make my top 10 list um and i really really enjoyed that film um i also have a full review of that up on the blog if you guys want to check that out but moving along here affleck actually uh from a report from deadline it seems that the next film that he's going to be directing is going to be called animals and that's also going to star matt damon so second time back-to-back -back films for affleck and Matt Damon, in which uh, he's going to be directing his best friend. Uh, the screenplay comes from Connor McIntyre, a first-time feature writer, um, and some punch-ups to the script have been done by uh, an Oscar-nominated writer called Bill, uh, named Billy Ray, who, uh, again, ironically enough, actually wrote the script for Captain Phillips, which Paul Greengrass directed. Um, so, yeah, Air sort of opened up this really interesting period again, uh, happily and luckily for, for moviegoers that, like myself, that really appreciate the mid-budget feature. And uh, Air was just a really great story, a true story about uh, the whole shoe deal of how Nike was able to sign Michael Jordan um, to his lifetime deal. And obviously, the I mean, Michael Jordan has this this um, aura around him as as a as an athlete, which we all know. But as a businessman and his um, his uh, lack for um, lack of a better term, his footprint on Nike. Uh, that's a lot of what tells that story. And Ben Affleck also stars in that. He plays Phil Knight. There's no word that he's going to star in Animals with Matt Damon. Um, and there's no real um, plot line that has been revealed for this. The only thing that has been revealed that, that is it is a thriller. And um, I believe it revolves around a kidnapping is, uh, is what the original report says. So I actually compared it in the article to like, can this potentially be Matt Damon's like prisoners? Um, which I absolutely love the film prisoners, which is directed by Denis Villeneuve. Um, if you guys haven't checked that one out, you absolutely should. I think it's a fantastic movie. Um, but getting to see Damon play around in the thriller genre, which he doesn't seem to do very often. Uh, I am excited to see uh, how he handles that. But Damon uh, had a very big 2023. Uh, in addition to starring in air, he also had a, a major supporting role in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Um, and now in 2024, he's getting started very soon because at the end of February, he's actually going to have a supporting role in um, Ethan Cohen's drive away dolls, uh, which stars Margaret Qualley and uh, Geraldine Viswanathan. So He's got a stacked schedule. I mean, he's got a lot going on. And um, Damon and Affleck just in, I believe it was 2022, started their new production um, vehicle, Artist Equity, which is is uh, a production company that I'm very excited to continuously see the types of projects that they develop. Um, they also have some other things um, 
in the works that you guys can see on my blog post. A lot of links to say other projects they're doing, Unstoppable, uh, and a new festival drama that's coming out soon called Small Things Like These, uh, which is going to be led by Killian Murphy. So they got a lot of projects going on. This one is actually going to be released on Netflix. They did work with Amazon for their last project, Air, so they do pivot to a different streaming service um, in the meantime. Uh, just rounding out the last couple of articles that I was able to post by the time of this recording, <clears throat> news things that came out. The other one here, the first one I'm going to cover uh, is one that has met a little bit of backlash online, I think, because um, of this this interesting wave we're going through with the influx of international voters for the Academy Awards and a lot of a lot more international movies uh, getting more acclaim and attention. Uh, American um, executives just seem that they think they can go ahead and remake these films rather quickly and uh, tell different interpretations for an American audience like um Give a perfect example. A Man Called Ove was a film that was released in 2015. Um, so yeah, A Man Called Ove dropped in 2015, got nominated for two Academy Awards. And um, it didn't take very long for um, the American uh, entertainment industry to basically uh, remake that film. And uh, they did seven years later. It didn't take very long at all. And Tom Hanks stars in A Man Called Otto, which basically tells the same story. And that project is available for to stream on Netflix currently. That one also got some love from people uh, directed by Mark Forster. And like I said, it stars Tom Hanks as well as Rachel Keller. And I believe Kristen Wiig might be in this or she was originally um, supposed to be in it. I don't know if she is. I haven't had a chance to see A Man Called Otto yet. But the project that we're actually talking about now is going to be uh, Another Round, which was another film that actually um, was a Danish project and uh, won the uh, – Best International Feature at the Academy Awards in 2020. It stars Mads Mikkelsen, Thomas Bo Larsen, Magnus Milang, and Lars Ramph. Um, an original movie, like I said, from Denmark that follows four high school teachers that drink alcohol on a daily basis to see how it affects their personal and professional lives. Um, and so this project, only a year after it won the Academy Award, I remember was going around the entertainment cycles and the news outlets because – um, Leonardo DiCaprio had come on board as a producer with his Appian Way uh, production company. Additionally, he was the one originally attached to kind of play the Mickelson role, which I thought would have been interesting because just uh, anytime you get to see DiCaprio sort of go down that rabbit hole of, of being outlandish and, and drinking a lot like we had seen uh, when he played um, uh, Jordan Belfort in, in The Wolf of Wall Street, it's always interesting to see it. But uh, so now the new report that I had just posted about um, – on Friday of this recording, February 2nd, is that Chris Rock will be directing the U.S. remake of Another Round. Um, and I, unfortunately, it's another blind spot in my um, in my movie watching endeavors. Another Round is on my watch list, but I haven't had a chance to see it yet. And I do believe there are comedic elements to it. And Chris Rock has directed things with dramatic elements to them as well as comedic. Uh, in his past, he had done uh, Top 5, which is the most recent movie, which was 10 years ago in 2014. He also did I Think I Love My Wife, which has a little bit more dramatic elements as well, which he starred in um, opposite Kerry Washington. But this project, I think a lot of people online are, are more so worried about the fact that this film was just released only four years ago as of this recording. And they're already trying to remake it. And the original is one that is beloved and a lot of people really seem to love it. Um, so it doesn't make a lot of sense that they're even remaking it in the first place. Um, and DiCaprio will stay on board as a producer, but he's not uh, supposed to be starring in it any anymore like it was originally conceptualized. But Chris Rock, uh, y you don't look at him and think like, OK, prestige filmmaker, he might be able to rework this to make it his own. Um, maybe he'll be able to do that. I, I, I don't know exactly. Are they going to lean more comedic? Are they going to lean more dramatic with his interpretation of this story? Um, Stuart Bloomberg, who was an Oscar nominated writer for the kids are all right. He was the original writer on this project when, uh, Leo picked it up with Appy and way, but it does seem now that they are going to be seeking out a new writer to sort of align with rock's vision for the film. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it, he, um, I also reported at the end of the article that, um, deadline had reported that Chris rock is supposed to be directing a Martin Luther King biopic, uh, at some point in the future as well. So maybe he's trying to lean more, um, directorially and, and more dramatic in, in tone. Um, but this is one that I, I, I don't love this news. I don't know how to sort of interpret it. And, uh, I do wish Chris rock the best of luck with this project, but I do think it's probably too soon to do a, a turnaround on something that just came out a few years ago. Um, 
So that is where we're at in terms of a lot of the articles that I have posted on the site. Um, but we do have one more for the week, and it is probably the biggest story um, of the week. And that is that uh, Emmy winner Catherine O'Hara is going to be joining the second season of HBO's The Last of Us. Um, so again, The Last of Us in, in the last month or so, we've gotten a lot of casting additions. I do have articles uh, on the blog as well um, that I can link for you guys in the comments and things like that if you guys want to check it out. But Caitlin Dever, Young Mazzino from Beef, and uh, Isabella Merced, who's like this, she's got a crazy slate. Just, I, just really quickly, I would like to read for you guys some of the projects that Isabella Merced has coming up before we jump into the Catherine O'Hara story. Isabella Merced, uh, probably best known for coming into uh, Transformers The Last Night. She plays Isabella. Um, and <laughs> ironically, she actually also played the live action Door the Explorer back in 2019. Um so, yeah, I, I've only seen her in one project myself, which was um, a movie that shocked me with how much I enjoyed it. And that was a little family film called Instant Family, which uh, uh, starred her as well as Rose Byrne and Mark Wahlberg. I really enjoyed that movie. She was really good in it. Um, since then, she's done other projects like uh, Sweet Girl, a Netflix uh, original film with her and Jason Momoa. She uh, did a voice in Maya and the Three, and then she starred in uh, Rosaline with uh, Rosaline, Rosaline, um, which also uh, starred Caitlin Dever, who she's now going to be um, in The Last of Us with. Um, so I do think that that's going to add a different dynamic to the chemistry that they have. But really quickly, this is her 2024 and beyond currently, which she has on the docket. This is why I think uh, there's a lot of breakout potential, similar to what happened sort of with Jenna Ortega and the Wednesday push for Isabella Merced. Um, she is one of the leads in Madam Web, uh, which a movie that probably will bomb and it's, it's generated a lot of memes, which makes me upset because I do think the caliber of actress that is in that film, uh, it, it's just upsetting. And I, I think I'm trying to, th I, I believe the director, oh, the, it's, uh, S.J. Clarkson, right? Yeah. I was going to say J.C. Chandor is doing, um, Craven the Hunter, which uh, he's directed some really great projects in the past, but, um, she is going to be in Madam Web, so she, she'll get her footprint in the, um, in uh in the comic book genre but uh she's also going to be one of the supporting characters uh in alien romulus the next film in the alien franchise uh she's doing this smaller movie called turtles all the way down that's going to be released on max in may that is uh, i believe a, a pretty big ya novel as well now she's going to be doing the last of us but also she has been cast in james gunn and peter saffron's dcu officially as hawk girl and she's going to be appearing first in superman legacy that begins filming um relatively soon so i guess she's going to be splitting up filming with that and the last of us but let's jump back into Catherine o'hara so if you guys don't recognize uh Catherine o'hara by name she uh is probably best known for playing moira rose uh the matriarch of the rose family in the sitcom Shit's creek um that was massive uh over the last few years and one of my favorite sitcoms of the modern era um so her getting to flex her dramatic muscles potentially in a series in the caliber of the last of us on HBO and, and a show that was a, a massive hit for the network, um, is exciting. Uh, the, the role, uh, in and of itself is currently under wraps. It's a complete mysterious role. And I do allude in the article to see like whether or not, um, we're kind of speculating whether she'll be a recurring character. Will we see her, um, is she an entirely new character that's written for the second season of the show? Is she a character that is known for the video games in either the first or the second game? Or is she going to be a character that's in a bottle episode, uh, similar to my favorite episode from this first season, which was Long, Long Gone, which starred Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett, eventually winning Nick Offerman um, an Emmy Award for guest actor. Uh, Storm Reid also won one as well for her role in the uh, first season as well. But um, you had great actors in the first season. You're getting great actors in the second season. Um if you guys hadn't had a chance to see our video with our uh, top 10 favorite shows of 2024, this one was at the uh, one of the top ones on my list. It was also on Michael's list as well. So we're big fans of The Last of Us here at Culture Wave, and I'm excited to see where they go with this. I mean, Catherine O'Hara is a legitimate actress, and uh, getting to see the casting additions that we're um, seeing unfold with uh, Craig Mays and, and Neil Druckmann series is for sure exciting. So I I'm looking forward to sort of seeing where they go with that. A um, couple other things I wanted to cover, and then uh, we'll get ready for next week's episode. Um, there's a really cool limited series that is going to be coming to Netflix. It's called Death by Lightning. I'm going to have an article for this up on the site probably, hopefully by the time this this comes out. Um, but the thing that attracted me to this one, and shout out to Zach because I know he's very excited about it as well, is that 
Um, this is going to be co-starring Matthew McFadyen as well as Michael Shannon, uh, two like great acting powerhouses who genuinely usually do not do bad work. Now, uh, Matthew McFadyen, I have a limited exposure to because I had only seen him in Succession. Uh, and I think he's uh, unbelievable in his role um, in Succession as uh, Tom Wamsgams. Um, very worthy of the two Emmy Awards he's received in the last couple of years. And um, Michael Shannon is is an actor that I've always really um, just revered. I, I think he's such an incredibly talented actor, so underrated. A lot of people like will know him by face, but they probably won't know him by name, uh, unless you're like a real legitimate cinephile. Um, I mean, so many projects that he's been in that I love, even comedically. I remember his, uh, his cameo in the night before, which I think is one of the more underrated recent comedies. Uh, and he's great. He steals, he steals every scene that he's, uh, on the screen. But, uh, this past year, I actually just saw take shelter for the first time. He's fantastic in that. Uh, he gives an unbelievable, uh, supporting performance in revolutionary road. Other things that I've really liked him in. I mean, um, some of you guys also might know him as playing General Zod in the DCEU, but, uh, he's great in Knives Out. Um, he's really good in Waco, which is another show that, that, that just kind of hit the, uh, hit the mark on uh, Netflix recently. He starred in Shape of Water, Nocturnal Animals. Um, he played Elvis Presley on screen before. So th this guy can do it all. And then of course his role in Boardwalk Empire, I absolutely love as well. Um, but basically this, uh, is going to be Michael Shannon's going to be playing um, President Garfield and uh, McFadden is going to be playing his killer, uh, Charles Guteau. Uh, and this show is going to be on Netflix. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the bad education screenwriter, Mike Makowski, is going to be creating the show with Matt Ross. Oh, this is, and I'm learning about this uh, in real time uh, with you guys because I haven't read this article yet. But Matt Ross, who directed uh, another really underrated movie from the 2010s called Captain Fantastic, he's going to be directing this show. And Benioff and Weiss are actually going to be executive producing this with their overall deal from Netflix. And it is based on the book Destiny of the Republic, which was written by Candace Millard. Um, it'll bring to life the stranger than fiction true story of James Garfield, who reluctantly was the 20th president of the United States and a guy who was his greatest admirer uh, who winded up killing him. Um, it takes place in the 1880s, so in the 1800s. So yeah, this is this is uh, this is a really exciting project, and I, I do think it could be a really good, great prestige project for Netflix. Um, there are some shows that go under seen on Netflix, unfortunately, because of the algorithm. And I do, I am aware there are shows, um, and I for no, I, I don't mean to shit on any of these shows if you guys are fans of them, but just movie uh, shows that hit the zeitgeist from Netflix that uh, don't really move the needle for a viewer like me. Um, I know like uh, Outer Banks is one that it skews more to a younger audience. And I'm, I don't really get it. I don't get the appeal. Uh, the Night Agent is another one. I just haven't had a chance to watch it, but it just seems like it might be like a 24 type of show on Netflix. And it's a lot more for casual viewers as people are cutting the cord and, and getting rid of cable. But Something like this reminds me of something like uh, if you guys haven't seen the limited series Godless, a fantastic show that was written and directed by Scott Frank, uh, and then he followed that up with with Queen's Gambit, which was which was also great on Netflix, and that one actually hit uh, the cultural zeitgeist in a major way. I mean, chess sales went up dramatically because of that show. Um, but yeah, this is a project that I'm really excited about, uh, and again, it's called um, Death by Lightning, and uh, I'll have the full article for that on the site for you guys by the time this drops. Um, a couple other ones I want to cover really quick. I have been covering the Michael Jackson biopic um, on the site. Uh, I did report uh, months ago when, or it might have been over a year ago now. Let's let's just double check that. Um, when Jafar Jackson, who is Michael Jackson's um, nephew, was cast originally. Yes, January of 2023, uh, when he was cast um, to play the pop icon or the king of pop. Um in this biopic that is being called Michael, uh, that is going to be directed by Antoine Fuqua. And uh, last week, uh, it was announced that Coleman Domingo, uh, hot off his Oscar nomination, his first ever for his role as ba uh, Baird Rustin um, in another film for Netflix, ironically, um, this will be his, the, his first project he's signing on to post Oscar nomination where he will be playing Michael Jackson's father, Joe Jackson, which I think is un just fantastic casting. Um, now. We also got the news this past week, which I'm going to be reporting on very soon, that Neil Long is going to be playing uh, his mother, Catherine Jackson, as well as uh, Miles Teller is circling a role in the biopic as well. Now, I, I'm not aware exactly 
Uh, who Teller will be playing? Oh, here we go. Teller will be playing an attorney in the Michael Jackson biopic. It doesn't see. It doesn't say which of Michael Jackson's attorneys he's going to be playing. Uh, Howard Weitzman was known for defending Michael Jackson and his estate in particular against creditor claims and accusations of pedophilia. <clears throat> and there was also Mark uh, Garagos who helped Michael Jackson in the early stages of the People versus Jackson molestation case before being replaced by Thomas Mesereau. So the thing that is really interesting about this project, and I am excited to see it, is that uh, being reported on, I believe it was by, by Jeff Snyder um, on the Hot Mike podcast with him and John Roca, is that um, Lionsgate is, is giving this movie a big budget. And they're really trying to highlight um, Michael Jackson and his whole career encompass it in one giant movie. And there's a lot there that you have to cover. And I am a bit worried that they're going to go movie route um, because you're going to have some people that one aren't going to want to see certain things unfold on screen. And then other people that if they don't go too deep into the controversies and the things that have gone on um, in Michael Jackson's life um, besides the music – then you run into a situation in which people really are upset with the filmmakers for not covering that aspect of his life and um, his his flaws, his, his awful flaws. So um, the cast so far, though, is really uh, exciting, really diverse. Uh, Miles, T I like all three actors in, in a really good – like I think they're all great and they're all um, – Good choices for the roles that they have. I mean, Nia Long is somebody that I think is finally getting her due and giving her a shot in something like this is is really exciting. Um, similar to how like Regina Hall just got one of the leads in Paul Thomas Anderson's um, new movie that it seems to be based on Vineland um, with Sean Penn and Leonardo DiCaprio. Like that's awesome for someone like her to be getting an opportunity like that because she's a great actress that has gone unnoticed for too long. It seems like and Nia Long is in a similar boat to that. Um, Coleman Domingo, I think is one of the greatest actors working today. Um, I still haven't had a chance to see Rustin, but one thing that his role in, um, in, uh, euphoria where he plays Rue's sponsor. Um, the guy, I just want to get the character name, right? Um, Ali, he does things in that show that I think are so uh, so quiet yet so nuanced in his performance, and uh, that is what put him on my radar very early on. So I, I am excited to see <clears throat> a lot of what he has coming out soon. Sing Sing was a movie that I had heard uh, from fe the festival circuit that was really great. Um, he's also, I, interestingly, one of the leads. He was one of the leads in Fear the Walking Dead for 109 episodes from 2015 to 2023. So maybe I go back and watch some of the earlier seasons of that and he does a good job. But uh, yeah, I am excited to see what else he's got going on. He also will have a role in the Drive Away Dolls Ethan Cohen film coming up, which has some great uh, cameo ensemble roles for himself. Matt Damon, Pedro Pascal is another one. Um, and on the heels of the Michael news, they actually, uh, Variety, I believe, reported that he's going to be directing his first film and it's going to be a biopic on Nat King Cole. He's going to direct and star in that too. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Michael's got a really great cast to start off. I'm excited to see that film. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you guys excited to see a Michael Jackson film um, hitting the big screen? I mean, it's been it's been a number of years now since we lost Michael Jackson. 2009, he passed away. Um, and I believe his estate had approved this. Uh, so, I mean, he had... Jafar Jackson, his nephew, coming into the film again, I think is is uh, important for the family's representation. But hopefully, and it does seem that they're they're going the route where they're going to cover some of the controversial things that he went through, so or, or, or he dealt with in his career. So I do think that's important. Um, Neil Long most recently uh, starred in the Netflix movie You People, which came out a year ago on Netflix. Um, one of my least favorite, if not my least favorite, film of 2023, unfortunately, but no fault of Neil Long's. I think the script was a mess. Um, Missing, she also starred in. Uh, and then this is the next thing on her docket. So she hasn't been too busy. I hope uh, this her she does a great job in this movie and she starts to get more recognition and more roles because I do think she is deserving of it. Uh, Miles Teller, uh, off the top of my head, I don't believe he was in anything in 2023, but 2022, obviously, he um, had the really uh, big role in, um, in Top Gun Maverick where he played Rooster. Um, so... Uh, he also starred in 2022 in The Offer, which is the series on Paramount Plus based on the making of The Godfather. Um, I've heard that show is really great. I haven't had a chance to check that one out yet either. And I did see him in Spiderhead, <clears throat> which hit Netflix uh, last year. And um, he was fine in it. Uh, unfortunately, I, I do think that uh, the movie as a whole was not very, gr very good. And I, I do think that uh, Chris Hemsworth was more of the standout getting to see him do something a little different in terms of his career. So, um 
He does have one project coming out before Michael, and that's going to be The Gorge, which is a uh, uh, action horror film from uh, Scott Derrickson, who uh, has done. Um, he did the first Doctor Strange movie for Marvel, but he's best known for his uh, horror work. He did The Black Phone. He did Sinister. So, um, going to be interesting to see that Miles Teller co-stars in that one with Anya Taylor Joy and Sigourney Weaver also uh, appears in that one as well. Here's the big one in Marvel: Geraldine Viswanathan. Uh, did replace Io Etabiri uh, in Thunderbolts. Um, and after hearing what I had heard in the in the trades recently, um, I'm not too surprised because the role is one that I'm hearing was a very small supporting role and the bear is actually going to get underway filming at the end of February. So <clears throat> I do think that uh, Marvel's really trying to get this movie underway. Uh, they also lost Steven Yun. Um, he was supposed to be playing Sentry. Uh, Lewis Pullman, also from Top Gun Maverick and Better Lessons in Chemistry, um, he will be taking on the role. Uh, who knows if it's actually going to wind up being Sentry or not. But they want to get Thunderbolts underway. I mean, they have a big ensemble for that movie. You're bringing back Sebastian Stan. I mean, Florence Pugh's schedule is getting busy. David Harbour uh, is just – I think they're they're filming on Stranger Things now. So, uh, And Netflix did confirm with their uh, Slate release for 2024 – that the final season of Stranger Things actually will be hitting uh, Netflix in 2025. So uh, I believe that um, Thunderbolts is probably next for for David Harbour as well. So um, Viswanathan is, is about to have probably the biggest role of her career, co-starring in Ethan Coen's um, Drive Away Dolls. So uh, could be a good coup for Marvel. Uh, a small supporting role, though? I don't know. Uh, I think she might be playing like an assistant to Julia Louis-Dreyfus's uh, Valentina character. So... Might not be the best u- utilization of her talents. Um, it's just one I wanted to touch on really quickly. I think uh, Viswanathan then is a talented young comedic actress. And uh, I haven't seen a lot of her dramatic work. But I do think that she would be a good get for Marvel. Uh, losing Etta Beery hurts because her stock is so high. She just came off um, hosting her first gig at SNL. Uh, and she's attached to a lot of different really good indie projects going forward. So having her in Marvel I think was a, be- was a better get for um for the franchise, we'll have to see if uh, the rumors come to fruition that her co-star in the bear, Evan Moss Backrack, will be playing the thing in Fantastic Four. That's been a rumor for a while. Um, last thing I'm going to touch on, we did talk a little bit earlier about Jenna Ortega. So let's talk about a movie that she is slated to star in, um, which I had originally reported on the site as well. Um Jenna Ortega is going to be co-starring now with Amy Adams, who is in negotiations to co-star in Sony's 3000 Pictures, uh, Clara and the Sun, which is going to be directed by Taika Waititi. Um, This uh, film, Clara and the Sun, is based on Kazuo Ishiguro's, excuse me for the butchering of his name or her name, um, in the New York Times bestselling novel of Clara and the Sun which tells the story of a girl named Clara who's going to be played by Jenna Ortega, an an artificial friend that is designed to prevent loneliness. Uh, And Clara is purchased by a mother. Um, In this case, it's going to be Amy Adams and uh, a bright teen named Josie who adores her robot companion but suffers from a mysterious illness. This is the story of Clara's quest to save Josie and those who love her from heartbreak and how in the process Clara learns the power of human love. So very interesting sort of... Uh, next project for YTT, uh, he is coming off back to back duds and totally different scales, right? Uh, next goal wins was like a passion project for him. Um, telling about the American, uh, Samoa's, uh, soccer team that hadn't won a game in, 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 I believe it was decades. Um, starred Michael Fassbender originally starred army hammer as well. They had to reshoot his stuff when a lot of the news came out about him so will arnett stepped into that role elizabeth moss is in that movie that movie bombed at the box office and critically and his project right before that he came back to marvel to direct thor 4 which is titled love and thunder which i can tell you even as a marvel fan one of my least favorite marvel movies and i haven't even returned to rewatch it since i saw it in the theater this is something where you're trying to take the humanity of character and pump it into a story um which I do like for YTT. My favorite Taika movie, though I do love Thor Ragnarok, is Jojo Rabbit. And <clears throat> he is able to mix humor along with human compassion and uh, drama with that movie. And I think that's why it got him so much critical acclaim. And it was such a unique movie that only someone like Taika could write and direct. Davi Waller will be writing the script. And let's see if, what he has done in his career. Because the name doesn't catch me off the bat. <clears throat> so he's written seven projects. Oh, okay. So he's, so this is great. I, I love the, I love the choice here. 
for something a little different uh, and this pairing between the two of them. So he actually started uh, as a writer on Desperate Housewives, um, but then he also wrote uh, a couple episodes of the television show Eli Stone. He was on the writing team for Mad Men. He also um, wrote three episodes of Halt and Catch Fire, and he created the FX miniseries Mrs. America, which was highly regarded Um, and I haven't had a chance to see that yet, but I've heard great things. So I do like the team in place here, Amy Adams and Jenna Ortega, very interesting pairing. And I think they have very different acting styles, but I can't wait to see them sort of be on screen together. Well, I guess Jenna Ortega probably won't be playing, uh, won't be, I I don't know if it's going to be a voice role with her playing an artificial friend or not. Um, and then a bright teen named Josie. I, I am curious on who they, who they go with there. Do they cast an unknown? Do they go with somebody whose stock is rising? Like, um, despite the fact that Obi-Wan Kenobi was not a great show. Um, the young girl who played uh, Leia in that, uh, Vivian uh, Lyra Blair, she might be a really good choice um, for Clara and the Sun. So that, that's that's another project that I'm definitely keeping my eyes on. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you guys excited for Clara and the Sun? Do you think that Ortega and Amy Adams could be a good pairing between the two of them? Uh, I think it's interesting. Um, but guys, that is going to be it for the very first episode here of the cinema wave news cycle. Let me know in the comments, what you guys think about me reporting the news this way. Is it, is it better for you guys to hear me, uh, sort of give it to you in this format and digest it this way? Do you enjoy the uh, blog post? Do you like them both together? Um, what else do you want to see me do in, in this format? Uh, I'm going to try to add some of the graphics that we have, <clears throat> over on the blog as well so you guys can take a look at at what we got going on as well as the links in the description as well so yeah it's the cinemawavemedia.blogspot.com you could check out a lot of these articles in their full uh capacity but also if you guys don't follow us on social media you can follow us at cinemawavemedia we're on instagram we're on tiktok we're on threads we're on facebook you can also follow us at underscore culture wave media and at jersey's finest pod for other podcasts as well i'm just going to sign off my name is darian scalamoni and i hope to see you guys next time